like to elaborate a little more on the question of values, cohesion uh, in post-pandemic times and in urban areas, because just echoing what we've just heard as one of the final statements in the previous talk, um, what if public spaces have democratic values? How do we still interact and exchange and then still allow for such social cohesion? And why is it so important? And I brought a few other photos than a lot of text these nights um, just to make us think about it a little more. So what are actually challenges and also urban challenges under COVID-19? And um, well, that's a photo which was taken in China. It could also be, well, not this exact situation, but any city around the world. Uh, so I want to focus a little bit on cities because they're in like their place where people or the majority of global population is living at the same time. You know, since medieval times, at least in, in the European context, there was this saying that uh, city air makes free, saying that people who come from the countryside who are living under oppression, who have to serve as uh, like servants to more high ranking people, they could go to cities to get citizen rights. But what would these citizen rights if they're revoked or if they're limited, as we have partly seen under COVID? And this is just probably the most extreme that you could find in, in China, where a whole building blocks are just locked and people are not allowed to leave their building uh, for weeks uh, under this COVID times. And it's been different in other places of the world, but we've seen cases uh, where really this interaction exchange has been limited for reasons, but at the same time, it does have additional impact because it also limits the exchange we can have. And then in the long run, would it also limit cohesion and which role does it play? And then how do we really return afterwards? And at the same time, we very critically need to ask ourselves also, where have we been before COVID? Was it so ideal? And um, just to provoke a few, few thoughts, and this is probably the most uh, researchy slide I've brought, because that, that's some results from a research project we recently concluded, which was, which was around infrastructure. It's a very different topic here, but we did a lot of interviews asking people, how would you overcome a crisis? What would happen? And if I may draw your attention to the bottom right quote, I only brought two ones from some expert interviews we did. And it was an interview uh, we did with someone in Cologne, which is, uh, as you know, a city in Germany, but with someone from the Red Cross who said, who was coming from abroad after a long stay, saying, I believe we don't have community structures here, as I know them from abroad. In my house, I don't know anyone. I'm not connected. In case of a disaster, I wouldn't know where's the capacities. I wouldn't have anyone to help, right? And then you're on your own and you sustain probably on unstate driven services that um, depending on where you are might be available or not. And depending on the size of the crisis as COVID has seen or has shown us. So just to highlight that this social cohesion um, might have been eroded even beforehand. And it is something concerning because this is how we as a society actually function. And then the question is, how do we overcome? And then uh, we, quite some feedback that we received was around, yeah, if there's a crisis, the political memory would be very short. And the same applies to all of us. It's, and that's something we right now, I feel, are seeing under COVID. Um, things are partly going wrong, partly going very wrong. Uh, of course, we would need to reflect that critically, but at the same time, there's some point we can't stand it anymore. And then the, the risk is, do we still learn from this crisis? Do we recover to a better state? How far are we still allowing for such discussions or not? So questions um, around um, how have we been living before this crisis? What could we improve? And what have been the challenges? Um, and some, some I've put here on, societal change, but then also this growing individualism, at least in the European context, and also a high level of perceived security, which uh, I think now with latest political developments might have been put at question, but really feeling very secure and like nothing really bad can happen. Uh, well, has been proven wrong latest since COVID. And then also growing dependencies and cascading impact of any crisis. So. Uh, we were not only facing a virus, uh, but this virus had implications on, on our daily lives. And then it trickled down like closed borders, uh, 
not allowing for transport, allowing for goods and services and uh, panic buying, empty supermarkets. So all of those uh, cascading impacts that we need to take into consideration. And, um, sorry, I didn't focus that much on the map you see on the left. That's, that's a simple map we took around um, uh, places in the city of Cologne or care uh, people number of people being in care facilities in need of additional care, whether it's um, retirement homes or daycares, um, daily ones, long-term ones. So those are tens of thousands of people who are in need of additional support. But what if these societal values are eroding and at the same time with a crisis in the healthcare system? Um, so again, we have to see all those developments against the background of, of change which is happening and particularly societal change in the long run. And as a second challenge, um, we, we also, in, in the context of um, challenged societies and uh, social cohesion, we, we do have climate change. And that is not only something which is a distant threat, but you can see first changes in our cities. And I don't know if you ever came across this, but we, we can speak about climate gentrification, say, meaning poor parts of the urban population, which are or have been living in parts of the cities which were considered non-attractive. While richer parts of the population, in this example I brought here, for instance, from Miami, were living along the coastline, in the nicer places. Now, with higher number of storms, sea level rise and all of that, they tend to move away because it is becoming too risky. Where do they move? They move into the part of the city where so far poorer population has been living. So those people are then being forced out and on top of being vulnerable anyway, are then forced into moving newly to places which, they, uh, which are at a higher risk and where probably they cannot move as a whole community, destroying their values and also destroying their kind of personal safety nets um, because very often you rely on your neighbors or friends and so on. So that's, that's something we will have to deal with increasingly in the future. So the question is, how do we now take it? And then how do we, how do we move forward as a society and um, towards a better urban future also. So um, what the question, what can we learn from this crisis? And I think we can learn three things which are very promising, um, despite still being in this crisis. So I, I started and on the second last slide um, around this eroding social cohesion, at least in the context of Germany where I'm based here, um, you could see that this COVID crisis has really um, has made people aware of this eroding social cohesion and it came back somehow. So suddenly you saw, for instance, uh, a growing uh, health, a growing awareness of people, like uh, people who didn't know before, uh, neighbors in the same big apartment block who probably have never said hello to each other, now putting a neighborhood uh, help, uh, like, support, uh, providing their neighbors with uh, grocery shopping because they didn't want to leave the house because of feeling uh, insecure under COVID or be belonging to a risk group. And, and even cities, and you see on the, sorry, it's in German, but it, the bottom right one is around the city of Berlin, you now organizing volunteer help for supporting more vulnerable parts of the urban population and getting engaged in community support uh, things. And if we would maintain this, and if there would be a way of keeping this, this might help us to, to revive those social networks and, and communities, which are the most important part or which are one of the very important parts of a society because we need this exchange and we also need to allow for such exchange and debates. And uh, one other aspect I wanna put is one very promising thing, very basic, but the crisis has also in some uh, cases accelerated urban change because suddenly 
things became possible we had never thought about, like hundreds of kilometers of bike lanes. This sounds super basic, but it, it is showing us how quick we are able as a society to change and to adapt. And in, again, uh, many cities have, uh, have uh, invented those pop-up bike lanes to, to start changing the transportation systems because people didn't feel secure taking public transport or so. So sustaining that will be challenging, but it's very much possible. And um, it speaks very much to this, and I'm coming back to this in the second next slide. This is what you see on the bottom left, the question of build back better after a crisis. And if you keep that in mind. And one other, one other aspect of building back better, coming back to what has been said in the last presentation, is really this urban layout and urban green. If we want to interact, if we want to have uh, engagement, social cohesion, we need those public spaces. Where else can we do? And we need to revive public space and allow for everyone to enter this public space. Um, in here, of course, in the picture you see, this is definitely under COVID and they have put those circles there so that people could still go to open spaces. Um, of course, a little distant, but we need such areas uh, which are accessible and which um, invite people to go and to also exchange and meet and discuss and uh, take action and then maybe come up with new community structures. So um, that's a photo from New York, but you could find similar things in, in many other cities. And it does speak very much to the question of how do we want to be as a society after COVID and what do we learn? And coming back to what you've seen, in this bike for, uh, slide on the building back better. I don't know how familiar you are with those um, global frameworks. You might all know the sustainable development goals. Um, on the disaster risk reduction side, um, there's the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction. And don't worry, I don't want to stress every single point now, but one of the goals of this Sendai framework that most countries around the globe have, have ratified is priority number four, uh, build back better, meaning better disaster preparedness, better response, better recovery, but also building back better, meaning not returning to how we were before, but critically reflecting what can be done better. And that does not only mean uh, how can I build my house in a better way after it has been destroyed by a flood, but also it should mean how, what are the values we need to restore? What are maybe things we do not want to go back to because it has harmed us. So how do we want to be as a society, as an urban society? What is our community structures and so on? And um, just to end, there's already very promising things which have accelerated under COVID, but which, have, uh, which are in a bit of a tradition and has be, have been established already before. And I think um, things like this 15-minute um, city uh, are extremely helpful and might help us solving many urban problems and societal problems in the future so that we don't live in those anonymous cities anymore. Um, but living in cities which are like little villages and those the 15 minute city um, that for instance Paris is now um, taking on as a guiding principle doesn't mean nothing else than everything in your city should be with that you need everything that you need should be within the reach of 15 minute distance walking distance so that you don't need to travel for hours just to go to the next uh, shop to get whatever but that it, it's really like this smaller communities which then allow for public spaces allow for exchange and also in the long run would be more sustainable um, because it's really on smaller distances and uh, more equitable, more just, and uh, in the long run, also more sustainable and more resilient. And with that, I would end. Thank you so much. <laughs>